Dear students, in this video, we will be discussing about the working of the relaxation oscillator. So, in order to learn the relaxation oscillator, first we will go through the active device and op-amp. Op-amp is a 5 terminal device. It is having two input terminals, non-inverting terminal and inverting terminal. Non-inverting terminal represent with a plus, inverting with a minus sign. These are the input terminals. Along with this, we have two bias voltage, positive and the negative bias voltage and the output terminal. These are the five terminals we have in the op-amp. So now, how this op-amp will be operating? The input, whatever we are going to apply across these terminals are uh, the difference of the input will be amplified. As the difference of the inputs has been amplified, this is also called as a differential amplifier and also it is called as an operational amplifier. So it amplifies the input signal whatever we are going to apply it. For example, if you consider our speech signal, it is of very low voice and that has been amplified using uh, the speakers. So the, using a mic we are going to speak it so that we can able to hear with the speakers. So whatever our speech signal has been amplified. So the meaning of an amplifier is its strength, uh, increasing the strength of the signal here the smaller or lower signal we are going to apply so that has been increased its strength that's called as an amplifier in order to construct the relaxation oscillator or design relaxation oscillator we require an active device an op amp and a feedback so a part of the output has to be feeded back so when we are providing the feedback if it is a positive feedback so it's it can regain the strength whatever has been lost for example if we consider the pendulum so once we initiate the pendulum uh, it works and then it keeps continuing so how that can be done because part of the output has been feeded back uh, positively so it can able to regain its working so in the similar way in the relaxation oscillator we are going to provide part of the output will be feeded back so positive feedback so we'll provide it for the positive terminal and that feedback network what we are going to do it will be using it of voltage divider and we have a tank circuit the working of a tank circuit the way like when the water has been filled in the tank we can able to open the tap and the water can flow out uh, if the tank is empty we can fill the water into the tank in the similar way we are going to use a tank circuit so that is an rc circuit so the capacitor what we are going to use it in order to store the charges would work like a tank and we have a resistor so once the charge has been full it can flow through this so this is what connected between this output and the inverting input terminal. Then we have a feedback across this positive terminal that is an voltage divider network. We are going to extract the voltage in between these resistors. So the other end has to be connected with the ground. And one more thing, when we have a network like this, always this resistor should be smaller enough in order to make this circuit work so these resistors r1 r2 r1 should always be smaller than r2 this is capacitor and this is the resistor r so we'll continue this we know this is the feedback and this is the rc circuit and the working now so we need to know what is the voltage across this positive terminal once the voltage across this positive terminal and the capacitor is equal, then our output will be 0 volts. If this voltage is greater than this, then we are going to get the positive voltage. When this voltage is smaller than this, then we are going to get the 
negative voltage. What is this negative and the positive voltage we are going to get? It is V set plus V set and minus V set. So plus V set means it's a 90% of this bias voltage. That's what we are going to get. So that's been written here. This plus V set and minus V set is equal to the 90% of the bias voltage. When both are equal, then it is zero voltage. Once we know the working, how this uh, potentials difference, we are going to get the output. Then we'll compute what is our output is. So this voltage is V out into R1 divided by R1 plus R2 is the voltage across this positive terminal. What is this V out? We know it is plus V set and minus V set. Sometimes it is zero as well. So in the when this positive terminal uh, is Oh, sorry, when the output here is plus V set, then we are going to get plus V set into R1 divided by R1 plus R2. Uh, if, if it is minus V set, when this negative terminal is having a higher voltage than this, then we are going to get, I think I have not written that. So, minus V set into R1 divided by R1 plus R2. So, what is this? output we are going to get only these two states plus v set and minus v set so this is plus v set and minus v set so when this positive voltage so we are getting plus v set across the output so zero potential across the capacitor now the capacitor starts charging through this path so this gradually the potential across the capacitor will be increasing once this potential across the capacitor reaches the potential across this positive terminal are same, then it will force our output to zero. As soon as our output is zero, the voltage across the positive terminal is zero, but here we have some potential. So this is greater than this. It will force our output to minus V sat. It will force our output to minus V set. So once this has been reached to minus V set, what will happen now? The voltage across the positive terminal is minus V set into R1 divided by R1 plus R2. This is negative voltage. Here it is positive voltage. Once this voltage is smaller than this, so it retains in minus V set itself. So, how long it retains in minus V set till this is smaller than this. So, once this is minus V set, now the capacitor starts discharging through R2. Sorry, through R. It starts discharging. It's the potential across this keeps on reducing. So, once this potential is equal to this potential, it will force our output again to plus V set. So, the capacitor charging, discharging, you write with the smooth curve. So, when it is plus V set, it is charging. When it is minus V set, it is discharging. So, once both are equal, again, it will force to zero. So, once it is zero here, the voltage across this will be zero. Here it is negative. So, this is greater than this. So, it will force our output to plus V set. So then again the capacitor starts charging, it retains in plus V set until this voltage is uh, greater than this. So like this, the cycle continues. Uh, this is how the relaxation oscillator will work. Now we need to design this for the given frequency and duty cycle. The given frequency is 1 kilohertz and the duty cycle is 50 percent so if the frequency has been given t is equal to 1 by f so now we come to know the time period time period can be calculated through this charging path c and r and the discharge path through the c and r so both charging and discharging is through this c and r so then the duty cycle will be 50 percent because charging and discharging time is equal so now we need to know what is the value of this resistor R 
and what is the value of this capacitor C in order to compute the charging and discharge time. Also, we need to know the R1, R2, these values in order to compute. So, only then we can able to design it. So, this is the formula T is equal to 2RC ln of 1 plus beta divided by 1 minus beta where beta is the feedback factor. R1 divided by R1 plus R2 is the feedback factor where we have four unknowns R1, R2, here C and R. So, with all these four unknowns, how we are going to compute the values? So, we have only one expression that is, uh, this is the formula, 2RC ln of 1 plus beta by 1 minus beta. With this one expression, we have four unknowns, R, C, R1, R2. So, it is highly impossible to compute all these unknowns with a single expression. So, we will consider the discharge factor tau. So, this discharge factor tau is equal to Rc. Tau is nothing but the time period here. So, with this, we already know the time period is 1 millisecond because the frequency is 1 kilohertz Rc. So, we will assume one of this C is equal to 1 microfarad. With this assumption, we can compute R. So, R will be 1 micro milliseconds divided by 1 microfarad. So, 1 kilohertz sorry 1 kilo ohms so instead of just assuming exactly 1 kilo ohms so we know every device there will be a drop so in order to have an uh, more accurate results we'll assume little higher than this so we'll assume with 1.33 kilo ohms 1.33 kilo ohms per hour c is known R is known for us. Now we need to compute R1, R2. So in order to compute R1, R2, we will get back to the formula. So here we will substitute R and C value. So then we have to compute this. So this and R1, R2 in the denominator. So we will compute LCM for this. R1 plus R2 plus R1 divided by R1, R2. R1 plus R2 minus R1 divided by R1 plus R2, R1, R2, R1, R2 can get cancels. Here we'll have 2 R1 plus R2. Here we have R1, R1 get cancels, only R2. R2 here in the denominator. So that we can just split it. 2 R1 divided by R2 plus R1 divided by, sorry, R2 divided by R2. So, R2, R2 get cancelled, so we get 1 here, 2 R1 by R2 plus 1. So, R2, Rc, ln of 2 R1 by R2 plus 1. This is what the expression. Now, so we will just write down this. We will move on this to the right hand side. This is T is equal to, okay, this is missing here. Just write down T is equal to, move on to the right hand side. So, we will get this is the expression 2 t divided by 2 rc so then with this expression we substitute all the values logarithmic uh, this is the natural log so e to the power will get all this so we compute this because t is known r is known c is known for us compute this value uh, and then we move on this one to the right hand side so minus one so we get the relation here for R1 and R2. So, we can just assume uh, any known value for R2. So, we can able to compute for R1 or we can assume a value for R1, we can compute for R2. So, let us take the values, known values in the sense the resistors which are available in the lab. So, we will assume it as 10 kilo ohms. So, then we get 2.2 kilo ohms for R1. So, once we compute R1, R2 and we know R and C, now we can substitute all these values for the frequency 1 kilohertz and the duty cycle 50%. So, the duty cycle will be T on by T. T on here is the charging time that is 0.5 milliseconds. T is 
1 millisecond. So 0.5 by 1 milliseconds, you're going to get the duty cycle. With this, I'll wind up the video. Thank you.